Hi there, and welcome to part four. So I mentioned in the last video that our main goal is to find the, the gradient of the loss function with respect to these weights matrices. Practically, the way that we do that is by starting at the end of the network, working out the gradient for the loss function with respect to the output of the function, and then working backwards from there. And this process is called back propagation. So let's type out exactly what we'll be working out in this video. We can leave this code block for now, we won't be coming back to that, but we will take import matplotlib and insert it into the top of our network. We'll be working out the gradient of loss with respect to O data predictions, which is what I just went through there. Now I'm going to simplify all that to grad pred. That's the first part of the overall gradient that we'll work out. To be more precise, this is the partial derivative of the, uh, the, the output predictions. And that's one part of the overall gradient. But to simplify our terminology, I'm just going to say the gradient with respect to the predicted outputs. And then going back through the network, we'll work out our gradient with respect to the W2 weights matrix, the gradient with respect to our H ReLU values, the gradient with respect to our hidden layer values before uh, they went through the ReLU function. And lastly, we'll work out the gradient with respect to W1. And we do it backwards because it enables the use of a, a fantastic little trick that I'll show you in a moment. But first, let's work out our first gradient with respect to our predictions. To work this out, we can simply take the derivative of the loss function. And given that our loss function looks as it does, basically it's the, the differences to the power of two summed Remembering back to our simple test case, y equals x to the power of 2, where the derivative was 2 times x, well, the gradient here is just as simple. It is 2 times O data predictions minus O data. Let's print that out and see what it looks like. So print grad pred run the file. My apologies, uh, we can't have empty uh, variables like that. So let's just comment those out. You can quickly do that by selecting them and pressing command slash. So print grad pred. Now remember back to our two dimensional graph, how we calculated the slope for the graph using our derivative function. So this function this loss function, which we've now computed the derivatives for, effectively has 16 variables going into it. That's one batch of output data, which is eight rows and two columns. So 16 different variables. This effectively makes it a 16 dimensional function, which is much more dimensions than the maximum three that we can visualize with a graph. And now, Coming back here to our gradient, each of these values here represents the slope for this function for that particular value or dimension. So keep that in mind as we go on computing our gradients. The next one we'll work out is that of W2. And I'm gonna teach you a trick now that'll allow us to, to quite easily work out the rest of the gradients in the network. So as I mentioned earlier, one way we can express the gradient of the, the output function with respect to the W2 matrix, if I copy that and bring, back, bring that back in. So one way that we can express the gradient of the output function with respect to the W2 weights matrix is like this, del F, so the output function, over del W2. Now, 
Well, say I told you that this here was equivalent to del f over 1 times 1 over del w2. Right? That makes sense because this, these two just cancel out here. So we could potentially add anything in here, and as long as they're the same, the expression overall is equivalent. So let's introduce something like, let's introduce del o, oops, del o data predictions. Let's introduce that to both sides of this equation. Intriguing. Where am I going with this? Well, del f or del of the output function, which is the loss function, over del O data predictions, we actually just worked that out and we called it grad pred. So let's replace that statement with grad pred. And as for this side of the expression, well, let's take a step back now. So our original O data predictions is the dot product between H ralu and W2. That means, depending on which way you look at it, with respect to W2, the slope of this function is H ralu, because that's a simple multiplication there. Or with respect to H ralu, the slope is W2. And if you're looking for the derivative with respect to H ralu, then we can just write that up as del O data predictions over del W2, which is what we have down here. So we can actually replace that with H ralu. And thus the gradient for this particular layer, W2, is the dot product of our H ralu layer and grad pred. Now the ordering is very important here. Let's just take my word for it that H ralu should go first and we'll put in dot dot grad pred. Now, if we print that out, we'll get an error because the shapes of these two matrices aren't aligned. They don't allow for multiplication. I'll quickly show you their shapes just for reference. So I'll do, uh, I'll comment that out and I'll print hrelu.shape and then grad Pred dot shape. Print that out. Okay, so the, the two sizes, the two shapes of these two matrices are 8, 3 and 8, 2. And we can only multiply matrices if their neighboring dimensions are the same. Now watch this. If I put a dot capital T there and print that out. So now their neighboring dimensions are alike. They're both 8. We've just flipped this matrix and we can now multiply them, no worries. So remove the comment from that line, add dot t there. That's called transposing the matrix, what we're doing there. And then print the result, so print grad w2. So here are the slopes, oops, I'll just get rid of that line so that's a bit easier to read. So here are the slopes for each value in the W2 weights matrix. And before we get to modifying our weights values based on these slopes, which is what we want to do at the end of the day, let's continue computing our gradient in a backwards direction. So the gradient with respect to the H ralu layer, we can work out in a similar way as we did before. We can say del f, which is the output function, the loss function, over del h ralu equals del f over something times del that same something over h ralu. And just as we did before, let's chuck in O data predictions in both of those spots. So the first half, as we mentioned before, the gradient with respect to the O data predictions we've already worked out. So let's chuck that in there. 
And the second half, going back to uh, going back to the, this equation here, the slope with respect to h relu is w two. So we can just replace all that with w two. And thus, our next step, grad h relu equals grad pred dot dot w2 dot transpose. So the order here is important, so follow what I'm doing there for reasons beyond the scope of this series. Now, in order to compute the gradient with respect to the hidden layer values, which is our next candidate there, we just have to remove the values that should be zero, okay? Because we're going backwards through the h relu. And we do this by typing grad h values equals grad h relu dot copy and then grad h values where the h values are less than zero, well, that equals zero. And the last thing we'll compute is the gradient with respect to W1. Rather than go into the detail here, you can take my word for it that this is the dot product between I data transposed and grad H values. Okay, so that was a lot to take in, but we are now at the end of our backward pass. In this video, we've been using something called the chain rule to compute the gradient with respect to the loss function recursively in a backwards direction. This is backpropagation, one of the most notorious concepts in the development of a good understanding of AI. So if you've made it this far, well done. I'll see you in the last video where we'll finally get our network learning.